Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting, exciting edition of This Week in Pop Culture. My name is Arash Zandia. With me, as always, is the magnificent, is the most talented. You can catch him on every Tuesday with This Week in Toy Culture. Here is Michael Bergi. What up, folks? Our, our next member of our team. Uh, you can catch her every Wednesday on the Castillo Studios channel, always creating painting and talking about art and other things with pop culture here is the lovely and magnificent and beautiful sammy castillo hi <laughs> and of course mike mayhem is running a little bit late because he's got to do some workouts so if you actually need a gym partner or two go and check out mike mayhem but we also have a very returning guest if you ever go and check out bitten apple tv we have the lovely and the most talented and the most extra talented, we have the Miss Leslie Fry. Hello. <laughs> right? Nice little intro for everyone, right, today? Yeah. Uh, Virgie, what are you talented in? I'm just curious. I, <laughs> he's good at championing the guest at a convention. That's a really wow, good that's talent. A, that's a great talent. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's, he a lot does, of, it's a lot of brown nosing, you know. Right. <laughs> he does. He does. I, I two shows. He did walk around with the championship belt. Right. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, let's let's get into some weird and out and outrageous. I mean, everyone's seen Tiger King, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Tiger. I mean, hold on. Let me. So Tiger King's family of uh, of the missing husband offers a hundred thousand dollars for any information about his disappearance <laughs> after the broadcast of tiger king one question is on everyone's mind where is don lewis his disappearance is still a huge mystery well don lewis's family needs the public's help with the help of their lawyer they will give anyone a hundred thousand dollars for any information I mean, is this even a mystery? During during Tiger King, Carol Burnett said, um, all you Carol have Burnett? to do is add <laughs> a little bit of salmon oil and the cats go crazy for it. So what do you guys think? You th where do you think Don Lewis is? Uh, Sammy, let's start with you. <laughs> um, uh, I think he is um, uh, kitty food. Kitty food? <laughs> You think it's cat food? Hi, Ben. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I, honestly, I think it's smart for the family. Like, if they, like, don't know where he is and they they still have belief or somebody saw something, like, it's actually pretty smart for them to, you know, do this after the popularity of the show. Mm -hmm. um, but Carol Baskins is making a name for herself by, like, going after – pop singers and like she's got like a war with cardi b now with her new her new um wap video there's like cats big cats and like carol baskins hate talking on on cardi b about it and it's like the weirdest feud ever <laughs> who would sit there and argue with cardi b is that even what kind of conversation would you have with it you get a or something well, like that but Twitter you're thing, inviting crazy yeah, but you're it's really funny. Like I was reading this, and it's like the weirdest. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone with coronavirus because, like, Cardi B is having Twitter war with Carol Baskins. Like, and you know, bad we got Tiger King during Corona during yeah, the start yeah, of COVID. Yeah, like Tiger King, and everybody like is obsessed with it. And I have not watched it. I have no <laughs> desire to watch it. I haven't um, either. Like, not like I feel like I would lose brain cells if i actually like entertain it but i mean you know more power to whoever's getting the money off of that one true <laughs> well look who decided to join us today <laughs> what's up mayhem uh you know what let's hear leslie's comment on tiger king and the family and uh all things all things tiger king and this one hundred thousand dollar reward uh, this is the beginnings of reality TV. That's right. it. I think that, you know, when you don't have any other talent but reality, uh, you have to make yourself relevant. So mm -hmm. getting it to fuse with Cardi B, you're attaching mm -hmm. yourself to somebody who is extremely popular. And, um, 
you're trying to make, you know, that's it. You're trying to get yourself out there. So, you know, what they say about it is good press, bad press. It's all good press. That's what yeah. There's no such but, thing as bad publicity. No but, bad but publicity. where do you think her husband is? Honestly, you know, <laughs> I mean, it would not surprise me if he showed up later somewhere. Somewhere, like, yeah, somewhere. Uh, they're gonna find him. Uh, I don't know. This might be a Jimmy Hoffa situation, right? I, I, I don't know. You know, maybe he ran away from that chick because I, I've heard about her. So, you know, he could be down in Barbados somewhere. For all I know. Um, but this is also part of the whole thing. I can't believe that the police have not found this man yet, right? Not, and that they're not really searching for him. So, don't you think it's kind of weird that they're you know, well, if you remember on if everyone, everyone was watching the story, the police has said it's been over 10 to 12 years since the disappearing and when they filed the missing persons report. And after a certain time, they actually do stop. Do, they actually do stop the whereabouts. And since the documentary had happened and Carol Baskins comment, you know, and all the fan theories that have come around, fans have a theory where. It's in that uh, cesspool that Carol ba uh, Baskins has underneath her zoo. Mike, what do you think, uh, you know, uh, Carol Baskins' first husband is? Or one of the husbands, we'll say. I follow the song. Carol Baskin killed her husband, whacked him. You can't convince me that it didn't happen. Right. She fed him to tigers. They snacking. What's happened? So I believe he's gone. There's no way we're going to find it. It's been 10 to 12 years. Right. And unfortunately... We I, like we don't really have a good successful turnover for like ten year old cases that I can think of. Like there are some that we ended the cases, we found sufficient evidence, or maybe found a missing person, or whatever. But ten plus years, yeah. Uh, if he's alive, then this was all for a show for sure, and this is all up. But if they don't find him, I think it's because he's gone. Like he's, he's dead. Gone, he's gone. left in peace. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. the tigers ate him. That's my standpoint. Ask the tigers. We have a uh, tiger interpreter. <laughs> interpreter. <laughs> I think no one have. Uh, isn't there a cat whisperer on Animal Planet? So we can just always call him. There's there's a cat person. Now. There's a cat whisperer now. I there forget the go. cat whisperer's name. We can get I the cat. Sure those tigers would be dead by now, though. I think yeah, there's that's a. True. Yeah, uh, but just like crows and everything, one always passes on the story to the next one. Uh, they test the theory where a guy wore a mask to one set of crows and 15 years later wore the same mask again and the crows freaked out. Michael, where do you think Don oh, Lewis I, is? I, I'm a huge fan of that show. I watched that when it first came out that weekend. I binged the daylight out of it, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, it got me to it, it too. It was, it was a train wreck. It's kind of like one of those ones you're like sitting there like this, but you got to watch it no matter <laughs> what. You just you have to watch this. this the show is just a, tr uh, a, a, a train wreck. Trip. Yeah. Honestly, it, he was definitely. I, I think she killed him. Like, there's no right. doubt about it. And she fed him to his her cats. Like, there's no doubt. It's just like Mayhem said. The song you listen to that song. There's no doubt about it. Like, the man is dead. We can probably check the poop and check the the what is it? The habitat where they probably that, are. You're yeah. gonna find some type of DNA trace mm. somewhere around that place. There's no doubt. And I think if the tigers, if she kept them. Mm -hmm. Tigers can probably live at least a good 20 plus years, but you're not going to find anything in their intestines or anything like that. They're, they're, they're empty. But I mean, she definitely, she definitely whacked them. And for her to even be like, to go with what Sammy was saying, like a uh, Twitter war with Cardi B, like you're barking up the, the tree of crazy. Like you, you know, <laughs> leave, leave that alone. That lady's got some fans that are just nuts. They, they will shut your business down. I wouldn't go after her. She, she got some fans that are a little bit rabid more than uh, Tiger King fans are. So she's, she's just trying to wait. She's just trying to ride on that wave of popularity, though. That's oh, what yeah. that's about. She's trying well, she, to keep her 15 minutes alive. Yeah. Well, she when the Sherry's was made, she helped fund some of it. And yeah. then she got upset because the way it turned out, it basically flipped the script on her and it made her look more guilty than he was. If you mm -hmm. ever watched the show, yeah. oh, my God, Hollywood couldn't even come up with something as crazy as this for a script. <laughs> Like but Hollywood, Hollywood probably, was the one. Hollywood yeah. was the one that actually made the made the uh, well. The there was a documentary. documentary. But, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Some, there's some writers somewhere going, "Nah, this will never work." And then they went, <laughs> "Tiger King," and everyone's like, 
damn, we should have done this years ago. It was just a run. It is so right. good. You got to watch it. And and then you had like two other companies deny it as well too. Yep. But yeah. speaking about someone who actually quit, and then we got to find an explanation for, her and we love her to death and everything. Ruby Ro uh, Ruby Rose extends on the reason why she exited ba uh, 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 Batwoman. As we all know, back in May of 2020, Rose announced that she will not be returning as Batwoman. Rose recently stepped uh, stepped up to give us some more details on why she walked away from the character and show. She said that she had to undergo emergency back surgery, uh, not allowing her... Um, Mess up my own notes. Uh, uh, basically, after back surgery, um, uh, mm -hmm. having an accident back in 2011, she also added that uh, that being the lead of a superhero show was tough. Being the lead of anything is tough. She then explained that 10 days after her surgery, she went back to work and work became more difficult for her. Ru uh, Rose went on to say that she's very proud and honored to have been the first person to bring Batwoman into a live action audience. While we, uh, while we do thank Ruby Rose for her role as, uh, Kate, ba um, as Cat Kane, AKA Batwoman, uh, we are now looking forward to, um, Jovicia, uh, Leslie to step up into her role. But when, uh, Ruby was asked about her replacement, she went on to say that I think she definitely knows what she's getting herself into. She seems fantastic. I was proud and very happy when I was told who would be replacing me. I'm just really stoked and I'm definitely going to watch the next season as well. See how all this is coming together. It seems that there is no cat fight here with Rose. Congratulations, uh, congratulating and being excited to watch season two of Batwoman. Yes. Since DC's on track to record, uh, since DC's on track of opening the multiverse, could you see Ruby Rose returning as Batwoman in a later future for a crossover series? Leslie, what do you think about Ruby Rose's comments of her exiting and her praising her new uh, replacement? Honestly, it, I don't know if it, it's just me, but I felt she's very uncomfortable in that role. She right. never actually stepped into that. Mm -hmm. There is so much you could do with that character. That character is so badass, And I just thought she just didn't hit the mark. And I think she knows that too. And right. that's one of the reasons why she's bowing out. Uh, Jamie mm -hmm. Leslie is really going to, you know, she's going to do that role some justice, but I just felt like Ruby Rose just was awkward. Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair. Michael yeah. mayhem. I know we got to ask which one is me. I guess mayhem. Mayhem every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, for, I agree. Uh, I think she was awkward with it. Uh, I've, you know, most actors and actresses who are like really committed to the role will make it work. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm not scoffing at back injury. Back injury, as someone who works out, will take you out of any game: right. the sleeping game, the setup game, the I need to go to the bathroom game. It's all, it's all it's about where you, you learn how to get around it. Um, so, first of all, I just want to say shout out to her for at least trying. And right. then bowing out gracefully, mm -hmm. and then and, and even giving props to someone who's going to take over because not a lot of actors and actresses do that, you right. know, or do it so tastefully. Uh, second of all, I do think she can come back for sure, uh, and that would be great because maybe she'll find her niche. Maybe she'll see other people do Batwoman and be like, I can do this because it may not necessarily be her too. It could also be the writers pressuring her to do other things and not to go DC to get uh, to conflict with DC's movie universe as well. Okay. So you know, it could be a bunch of things. So when she comes back in the multiverse, you'd be like, Oh well, she's back. What's her story? Boom, there she goes and she takes off. So I definitely think she can definitely come back. So you could definitely see like the multiverse or like some 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 later storyline, pretty much. She hasn't burned her bridges. Why not? Right. Honestly, that's true. That's true. Never, but you know, DC didn't come out with a giant statement saying, you know, forget Ruby Rose. Right. Sammy, your thoughts on Ruby and her exiting and her statements? Um. Well, I've never been very quiet about my opinion on her performance. Um. That I think sucked, and I think the back issue, the whole, the whole back surgery thing. Right. I think is really a red herring to save face because she sucked. She knew she sucked. 
Mm -hmm. and she rushed and got a role by, that she wasn't prepared for. I think, I think she wasn't prepared. Yeah. Um, as an actor for that role. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Warner Brothers jumped on her. She had a great agent and Warner Brothers jumped on her because she got that role literally right after John Wick. Yeah. Where he basically sat around and looked pretty and went like this. And <laughs> a chimp could do that. Nothing for nothing. But um, so I think that she got the role based on her, her you know, uh, publicity on that. And then when it came down to it, she couldn't follow through and Warner Brothers went, Crap. This isn't working. <laughs> this is not working. And I think that the whole saving face, I think it's a bunch of saving face because it's very scripted. Literally, she, the same, uh, with all of the articles I've read, it's the same exact press release. Like, it's not like they spoke to her directly. It's very scripted what she said. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a combination of Warner Brothers and her trying to save face for a mistake. And the reason they're exiting so politely is because it was Warner Brothers' fault. They picked mm. her and everybody hated her. Right. I can't, I literally have not heard of one person um, that say, like even and like said they liked it. Right. Everybody was like, well, this person was cool, but she sucked or she wasn't great. So, I mean, I could see them bringing her in with like an episode two crossover, like alternate reality kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because they really just, I don't know, but again, how, I don't know how they're going to exit her character. Um, you know, I think that like, if they, are they going to kill her? Are they going to send her away? Like what, how are they going to exit her? Cause if they kill her character, then she's not coming back. Right. You know what I mean, but I could see them bringing her in for a, um, you know, for a one or two part crossover. Yeah. Um, Mike, do you think she'll probably end up joining the what was the crossover one? The Leagues of Legends of Tomorrow? Could you see her uh, crossing into that? I hope not. Um, <laughs> honestly, to the truth, like, I'm, I'm right. sorry. Like, Tell us what you really think. God, right? No, I, I'm, I'm in the same boat with Sammy on this one. I just think the woman, she's, she's eye candy. She's nice to look at. She did a great job in, you know, Orange is the New Black. And then when she w got on John Wick, she did the the triple X one. Xander Cage comes back with, yeah. you know, Vin Diesel. But she didn't have to do a lot of acting there. I mean, heck, we don't expect yeah. much out of Vin Diesel in those movies either. We just expect an acting <laughs> popcorn flick. Yeah. But when right. she came to do the Batwoman, I was super excited because I was like, finally, we're going to get Batman on the TV screen in a way, but it's Batwoman. We're going to get the one story that no one really talks much about. Um, right. as being character so like, real life community i thought it was great she never jumped into that role i think from the get-go mm. she her her action sequences if you go back and watch some of the action scenes in some of those shows they're horrible like mm -hmm. you can tell she's telegraphing and missing punches by like a foot foot and a half and she's already going to die before somebody even takes a swing at her yeah. like i think it was bad she's i think with the back Injury, she's using that kind of like all of a sudden now as an excuse as to why she's bowing out gracefully. Same thing like Sammy said. I think Warner Brothers just want to cut ties. She wasn't very good. I like the new girl. I think she's going to do a phenomenal job. I've seen her and some of her stuff that she's done. I think she's a great actress, and I want to see her role and how they are going to transition from, you know, Kate Keene to this one um, to see what her, her style is. And are they going to bring the same cast back? Like, are we going to get, you know, uh, Lucius Fox's son? Are we going to get all of them characters back now? And now what happens to the yeah. girl that's her stepsister and her dad, the crows and stuff? Are we just going to, is that being tossed to the side? Is that still going to be part of it? Like, I'm curious to see how they're going to do with it. I think they might bring her back as something later in the year. Maybe like midway through the season, she comes in and kind of really officially, hey, the Batwoman mantle is yours. Have fun with it. I'm stepping away. I'm done, right. mm -hmm. but let's see what they do with it. I'm just glad she bowed out while she did. I'm sorry. I thought she was a very, very bad actress in that role. I just, she couldn't do the action sequences. She couldn't really hit her cues, her marks, and stuff like that. The writing, yeah, was a little bit down, but right. I mean, if you're a good actress or actor, you can overcome some of those mistakes. That is and we know, And we know there's a lot of great actors out there probably got handed a pile of 
ugh, and they turned it into <laughs> something that was good, right. you know, and there are people that have that talent and directors also have that talent that can turn something around that's not direct, you know, written correctly, but they can make it a cinematic, you know, masterpiece in a way. She just wasn't the right choice for them, in my opinion. Okay. I, I never thought that she was an actress. I think that she's a pretty lady. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you go in into a role like that and people seriously spend time in the gym to do action roles like that, to do something that looks believable, I just don't think her heart was in it. And I think she knew that she just couldn't, she couldn't pull it off. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, on to the next one, pretty much, because since you guys all don't want Ruby Rose around, how about something that a lot of fans want to happen in live action but probably won't? Well, Doctor Who's uh, Christopher Eccleston, uh, Eccleston returns as the ninth Doctor for the first time in 15 years. Eccleston will reprise his role as the ninth Doctor for the new Doctor Who audio range from uh, Big Finish Production. Big Finish is still keeping the story and the details and the guest cast under wraps. Fans can currently pre-order all four volumes of Doctor Who, The Ninth Doctor's Adventures, uh, which will be released as CD, as a download, and, a, and for a limited time on vinyl. But the vinyl's pressing per, vo uh, per volume will be around 1,000 copies. Who's excited for the new adventures of Doctor Who? <laughs> of The Ninth oh, Doctor, yeah. pretty much. Well, let's start with you, Leslie. I love Christopher Eccleston as a doctor. I love him. He's like one of my favorite. Him and Tenet are two of my favorite doctors. So I'm really excited to see what he does with the role. And I know he really loved the role. I know that he left the role because he was having some mental health issues mm -hmm. um, and some issues, I think, with the writers or whatever. I think he felt that they were going far away from what originally the doctor was supposed to be all about so he, he had to see he stepped down but i'm excited I, I i can't wait to see him his face again so i'm a big fan you're it's not his face these are all audiobooks I these are care. all audios you don't care no. <laughs> just put his no. face on the cover listen, 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 right? listen, listen i'm gonna tell you something i think that he will do it justice because he loves the role so much so okay. I'm off. I'm all for that. Sorry, I didn't hear it was audiobooks. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Mayhem. I'm gonna have to agree with Les. Although I don't know Chris the, Christopher Eggleston like that. Uh, uh, you know. Let's just, let's just say this. Gone in 60 seconds. That's it. So I'm gonna say. Okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. But for what I do remember uh, about actors and actresses, like you know, coming back to a project after you left after you leave shows that you really either a care about the project or you're really invested so if he left because there were differences let's just say differences for him to come back means he's happy about something that he's happy that he can give mm -hmm. the fans and even kind of himself something that he wasn't able to give before and i'm looking forward to seeing that because well hearing that because first of all it's like 12 seasons right of doctor who it's like 12 and that's not including like the is that 1975 version from before mm -hmm. So it's 12 ongoing seasons from the 70s, from the 70s going on. And he gets to add another more. And it's it's just gonna be great. I have to catch up personally, because I think I left that for like five. Mm -hmm. Maybe five. I gotta check. But like the fact that he's coming back and he's gonna do an audio book about that. And he's I feel like he's gonna really rip it. Like he's gonna when I say rip it, like he's gonna do it great. And other doctors are gonna be like, well, you may have to take a page from this, you know, and kind of incorporate it. He's going to change the culture. Um, I'm not like a particular Doctor Who oh, fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but what I will say is what I like about actors now is that they're really, um, they're really embracing like being a part of different projects, not just film. Like they're embracing, you know, TV and and you know, audiobooks now being a thing with Amazon's Audible. Right. Um, so I and I really like that actors are putting themselves into you know those kinds of things. Like Stephen Fry was really like the first one to to really do audiobooks, and um, I know Christopher from other acting things. So I, like even though I'm not an in, like interested in Doctor Who he's a great actor like i would totally listen to him do whatever like I, he could read stereo instructions and i would <laughs> <listen>. you know <laughs> and so 
Like I, I love the the fact that you know actors nowadays are not so they're not pigeonholing themselves into I'm only allowed to be on screen. Like they're doing so many other projects and making themselves so much more accessible. Virgie. Uh, I'm not a Doctor Who fan, so I do apologize, folks. I'm very sorry. I've <laughs> never, I've watched that. I know, like, oh, wait. Oh, wait. oh I'm there sorry. You there you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I might have caught an episode or two because of David Tennant. And, but my problem is, I, I watch it. They have a screwdriver that becomes any internet. I, I just, I can't, I don't know. And I'm a sci fi nut, like, should like stuff like this. Not a big fan. I do like Ecclestein because I've seen him. He was Destro in the original J. Joey. He's been Malik and Thor, Dark World. Like, I'm a fan of that man, and I think mm -hmm. he's phenomenal. So I think he could definitely come back and do his, you know, audio. And he's a great actor, so I know he's going to jump right back in that role. And I like the fact that they're trying to keep that series alive for some of these other actors that are like, hey, well, I'm not a doctor anymore. We're moving on. What are they on to, like, the 10th or 11th doctor now? They're on the 13th, they're on the 13th doctor now. Okay, I should tell you how much I'm way out of the loop. I'm very sorry. Guys. <laughs> but, you know, they're still doing stuff for some of the actors that were very popular on the show. And I know Eccleston was very popular. David Tennant was very popular. You know, so to do that, I like that because it might do other stuff. Maybe we get some Harry Potter things or Star Wars books or something that could be done audible or even take some of the stuff that's out there and have some of these actors, you know, do the audio parts for it. Like, I don't, would love to. Don't, don't lie. You just want to see James Earl Jones read the phone book as Darth Vader, and you go, I'm satisfied for the rest of the world. <laughs> Who doesn't? Come right. on. There was a commercial where he was reading the phone book. There was a commercial, where, yes, where he was reading yeah. the phone book. It was a 9X, was it the 9X commercial, Bell Atlantic? Something oh, like wow. That? Yeah. Uh, now, you, now, you, now you're dating yourself. I'm really that, dating. Yeah. yeah, you know, I wasn't going to say anything. To everybody matter. watching, to everybody watching, phone books back in the day where you could actually look up the phone number, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they, they were, were large. <laughs> and you had two versions. One was for businesses yep. at one point. Yep. Yeah, yep. Those are white I have to tell you, I did listen to Sandman um, while I was traveling on the road, and I have to tell you that these audible book, these audio audible books are so fantastic. I was immersed mm -hmm. in that world. The sound effects, the yep. acting, it yep. was, it was fabulous it was fabulous mm. if you it's ever get a chance to like if you ever had to do radio like if you listen to radio back in the day you know right. that, that's our generation but this it was really good you ever get a chance to listen to the audiobooks of the harry potter yeah. there's one guy doing it and he does the voice of every single character on it and it wow. is absolutely that's incredible wow. he literally everybody and you will literally swear that there's someone else in the room doing the voice of that particular character I've listened to all eight, uh, seven books and absolutely love it. it. They are fantastic. And I believe he's destined to do The Cursed Child and maybe two, yeah. one more after that as well, too. Um, wow. To do that. Wow. Wow. Well, wow. How about, how about, how about, I want everyone's reaction for this one as I'm about to post, all right? How about, how do you guys feel about The Fresh Prince of Bel Air getting rebooted? I mean, yeah. I, I, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me yeah. finish. Reboots seem to be all the rage these days, again. Um, so let's <laughs> add another show into that pile. Let's add the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But when you hear the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you think of Will Smith. But that's what that's what you're going to get. Well, sort of. Will Smith will be behind the scenes as a producer for the reboot. But this Fresh Prince will look and act a little bit different uh, than the Smith version. And it is said that it's not a reboot, but a new show entirely. But fans have already voiced their opinions, with some getting excitement of a fresh, up-to-date story, while others just say some things should never be remade. What do you guys think will be... Um, do you guys think this will be another TV, TV show reboot fail, or will this be, you know, will this be something that makes the cut of a good show? Yeah. Leslie, let's start with you. So Come on, I Leslie, know this, is, this is based on a YouTube video that was made. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was like a trailer, yeah. um, a more serious version of of mm -hmm. that family. The whole the whole story behind the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes, I am a hundred percent waiting to see this okay. because I think that 
in light of all of the reboots, it is a little bit different, but we all know the story. We know the comedic version. I want to see the serious version. And I think this is going to be a huge success. And mm -hmm. shout out to a friend of mine who got cast in this. So I am all for this 100%. I right. cannot wait to see it. I can't wait. Okay, so you're for you're 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 for this new version. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think the I think this generation is for it too. Okay, mayhem. I I'm all for it as well. So first of all, fresh in a uh, fresh pair that yeah, fresh Prince of Bel Air used to <laughs> air around the same time as Martin Martin Lawrence's mm -hmm. show, and I was too young to be watching mm -hmm. Martin, but I was still watching Martin, and I always used to go back and forth with my yep. friends, which was funnier, fresh Fresh Prince or Martin. Martin by far. However. Oh, yeah. The morality, the lessons, and even the humor in the Fresh Prince was can't, couldn't be denied. Mm -hmm. It can't be denied. I'm not a Fresh Prince of Bel Air fan, but I do watch it. I do enjoy the show. There are fans that I can't consider myself like they know the whole show, but I still love the show. And you look at some of the 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 the, the morale, rationality that's in these episodes that's relatable. Now, fast forward, that's what he's bringing. He mm -hmm. he's bringing relatable content to viewers who are looking to be nostalgic as well as newer viewers. So of course they're going to relate to it. Of course they want to see that because that's what we're going through right now. I won't go into it, but all the things, like if you look at that trailer, if you haven't, stop what you're doing, look at that trailer. It yeah, is it phenomenal. Out. It right. is phenomenal. It is great. Uh, I think he's on his way to making, uh, I would say part two, a sequel that's better than the original classic. Mm -hmm. And that's me. And that's me, like, I, I know I'm throwing it. I'm, like, really Hail marrying it. But, like, he's on his way because he's got Will Smith. He's got Quincy Jones, all the producers no, as well. We, we, don't, we don't know if Quincy Jones is in. All we know is that's Will Smith and the writer. We don't even know if Quincy Jones. They confirm it? Okay. They did not confirm would, Quincy Jones. Okay. And they even, and even mm -hmm. they don't convince Quincy Jones because Quincy Jones owns the yeah. title, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So mm -hmm. this title will just be called The Fresh Prince, which he's can avoid all of, which will avoid all the, even if right. even, mm -hmm. even it doesn't get all the original producers, there's too much great talent out there that okay. are writing currently that we sometimes pass over that Will Smith can get in contact and write a great sequel. And I'm calling it a sequel. It's not. It's I don't know what season it would be. Content, although it's a different show. There's a whole different. Film, it's a whole different show. All different feel and everything. It's going to be great. They're going to knock it out the park. Right. I guarantee they're going to knock it out the park. I bet my first child. All right. <laughs> so you're saying this. Leslie says this will make a cut. Mayhem says it makes the cut. Let's hear what Sammy has to say. So, um, I, I, well, first thing is, I am actually I saw the original trailer, like the, the guy's trailer, the mock trailer when it first released, and I absolutely love the fact that this guy made this trailer for fun. You mm -hmm. know, to test his skills, put his skills out there. And a couple and put it out on YouTube and it circulated to the point where now it's a legitimate project. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they came to him, you know, and I love the accessibility. I love that sort of uh, level of accessibility that the internet brings for these types of projects to just kind of pop out of nowhere. Um, I'm really interested to see what they do with this. Um, I think now is a perfect time to kind of, relaunch a show of that style, but in a different way, because the Fresh Prince, I, like, was what it was in the 90s. We mm. wanted comedic family sitcoms. We wanted feel-good comedies uh, for all demographics, like, you know, for different demographics, and that's what it was. And they did bring, you know, the poignant, um, you know, discussions uh, bringing light, you know, uh, bullying and racism and all sorts of, you know, broken yes. child family issues. dad issues, family dad issues, things mm -hmm. that most uh, most shows at the time were sweeping under the rug because that's not what people wanted. And you know, I love the fact that it broke that sort of uh, that part of the mold but kept with what everybody else wanted and put it, put it in a nice happy package of bright nineties neon clothing and pastel backgrounds. Um, but now we're, we are a much different generation, you know, um, and we are looking for much different, um, you know, much different, much different 
different things uh, that are significantly different from our happy-go-lucky, you know, 90s time. So I think it's a really good, um, uh, I think it's going to be really good. And I like the fact that they're not trying to remake it, but they're trying to make it its own thing with the inspiration of the show. So some of this, you know, maybe some of the characters are still going to be in it. You know, maybe, the, you know, Will Smith's character is still going to be the main character, but he's not going to be the same guy, you know. Um, and with Will Smith attached, you know, one, money, two, integrity, and three, the talent and quality is going to be behind it. So I'm excited to see what they do, you know, uh, with it. Yeah. Right. Bergie. I'm a huge Will Smith fan. Like, I grew up on that kid, you know, when I was a kid, Will, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he's DJ, I'm the rapper, like him and Jazzy Jeff, like I grew up on that. I never missed an episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when I was on TV. Monday nights, like eight o'clock, I was home Monday night every time. I absolutely loved that show. I am interested to see what they are going to do with it. And I think Will is going to do a great job with it. He really embraced that role going you know, forward. I mean, some of the episodes that they went through, I still think the one where Uncle Phil, where his dad, his dad didn't want him, is still probably one of the best episodes they ever did. Like, that show killed you to watch it, and it was fantastic. I want to see what they are going to do. Are they going to bring any of the original cast back? You know, are we going to get the sister, you know, Carlton back? I, I mean, they're going to add a little comedic to it because they just have to. It's Will. He's not going to keep it totally serious, but it's going to be... 80% probably drama, you know, 20% light heart, you know, comedy family wise, which I think is going to be a great depends on who gets it. will determine, I think of how good of the audience will be that will get to see it. If it's on Netflix, if it's on regular TV, if it's on regular TV ratings drop a little bit, if one episode to the next, it might not make it past like mid season. If right. it gets to Netflix, they're going to drop 10 episodes. People are going to binge that in a heartbeat. That show is going to be number one. It's going to do great. It all just depends. I think on who gets it. And, you know, what actors are they bringing in and what's going to go? Because I've heard Netflix is rumored, ABC or NBC is rumored for it, and HBO, HBO Max. Max. Yeah, because HBO Max the right owns the, yeah, yeah, they own the rights to the original. Yeah. Do they have the rights to the original? Because I remember them being yep. on NBC, yep. and NBC was the one that has the rights to it. Nickelodeon and dropped the rights, and then HBO Max picked it up, and you mm -hmm. can watch Fresh Prince on HBO Max now. Well, there we go. And it's on because like, I did watch a couple episodes a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and could this could this get a could this also get a, a different rating than what the show is, especially it being on an HBO show? They can actually push. Uh, they can actually push the uh, the agenda, just like the way they had it on The Wire and some of the other HBO mm -hmm. shows. Could they go for a harder uh, I demographic? I don't what think do it'll be that extreme, no. but I think okay. it. But I think that it will be hard. Uh, I think the content will be a lot more adult and a lot less uh, comedic. There mm -hmm. will be some. There there will be some humor in there, but I mm -hmm. think that it would probably be a PG rating because they still want to get that audience in there. I, I this definitely yeah. not going rated R. I think PG thirteen is the rating that they're probably going to stick around because they will have those teen style like you know storylines that they're going to go with, but they're not going to go with the adult R rated you know storyline. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, how about some weird lighter side? Pretty much everyone likes mustard, right? On their hot dogs <laughs> or sometimes on their burgers. We'll say I don't know who likes him mustard on their burgers, but anyway, French is mustard has <laughs> beer. <laughs> And it's the real thing. Um, beer and mustard, that's something you see at a friend's barbecue or at a park, whatever. But that's just it. French's has just partnered up with uh, Oscar Blues Brewery. French's Mustard Beer is a tropical wheat beer brewed with French's yellow mustard. The beer is... Yeah, I know. I'm going to read you the ingredients that's actually part of this beer. The beer is infused look with key lime. Face is priceless. <laughs> yeah, key lime, lemon, uh, tangerine, and a bit of passion fruit to create the tart to match the bright and bold zip of classic yellow <laughs> exactly. mustard. Exactly. exactly. Um, but if you're longing to try this beer out for yourself, uh, you can catch it uh, at their local brewery, which is located in Colorado or North Carolina, or go to mustardbeer.com and find out where you can get this beer. Um, real quick, we'll go through this. Does anyone even want to try this, Leslie? Would you even give this a thought if this was at a friend's house or 
just <laughs> you're just getting the puke bucket and yeah. Exactly. Listen, first of all, I'm not a real big beer fan. I might like apple cider or something like that. But the idea that all that makes me think about is it, it mustard me, and beer. Who does? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of was when I was in college and I went to a frat party and I was drinking a lot of beer and I had fish sticks that day. And oh. So, oh. So all I can say, I already is know where this ended. That's what that makes me think about. Yeah. It's, it's coming up. I'm just thinking about it. It's coming up. Just thinking about it. Yeah. Mayhem got a bucket <laughs> next year or what? Uh, you know what? I just want to know something. And this is a very serious question. Like, are we running out of ingredients to make good food? Like, are <laughs> we, are we running out of ingredients? Are we that bored? What's going on? Look. Okay. Okay, I'm all for ingenuity. Because you know what? Sometimes you add something, something tastes great, all that good stuff, right? I mean, does everybody know the story of cornflakes and how that was created? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up. It's funny. <laughs> but the fact that you want to bring French Girl, mustard actually, into beer. <laughs> exactly. French mustard beer. Like, mustard in beer. We already have a divide in ketchup, mustard, may Like, beer. Oh, like, I can't do it. And then, so, shout out to chat. We don't, we don't, we acknowledge chat every now and again, but chat was right on it because everybody's giving you the throw up face and whatnot. Exactly. <laughs> like somebody serves you that they don't like you. Leave. <laughs> leave. Leave their present. Leave their home. Leave their present. That's all. Sammy. Um, I, I think I, out of morbid curiosity, I would try it. I'm not a beer person right. at all, but you know, I've had chocolate, like chocolate stout, and you think, eh, chocolate and beer, oh, but chocolate stout's awesome. You know, a Guinness chocolate stout is amazing. So with the other ingredients that's in there, they're all very citrusy and yeah. sort of have that sort of tartness to it. So like, it makes me wonder like if they're just using like the yellow mustard, you know, seed, as opposed to let me squeeze some, some of the mustard into the hops, you know, like I think they're making it sound like that as a gimmick, but you never know. Like it could be like, Ooh, it's a little spicy. This was made with mustard. Weird. Um, but my gut reaction is, is literally the, the throw up your face. Yeah. Like, ugh, no. <laughs> Virgie, you're a beer drinker. Oh. You're you're one of those guys that definitely is gonna have a case on your no not not a case. But you did say one of the breweries is in Colorado, right? One's in Colorado and the other one is in North Carolina. So yeah, okay. I, I can see you checking it out. <laughs> well, I mean we do do a show there in August for Colorado, so it is something that maybe if I'm out there and I see it at the liquor store, I might grab one. I I morbid curiosity, kind of like Sammy said, just to try it. But I already know I'm going to take a sip and I'm going to go, nope, and just dump it out. It's just, that's just going to be gross, man. And all I think the. It's also a limited release item. Like, okay, I don't think it's, a, it's a short, it's a short, it, it is a short it's release. Short, so you have to go yeah. online to see which beer distribution, Mike. which beer Mike. distributor is going to have it. Listen look, me, Mike. Look, Martha's Mike. not here. Martha's not here. <laughs> you know, in movies where there's a clear sign that says exit <laughs> and they go the opposite way, yeah. that's yeah. exactly what you're doing. <laughs> Hold the other way, Mike. Don't oh, do it. Oh, I, I, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I think it's one of those morbid curiosities. I think I'd want to try it just to say I did and then be like, and then, you know, it'd be a weird thing. We'd, I'd probably be sitting there going, this is actually pretty good. Like, but right? I don't think I'm going to be that way. I'm thinking it's like, I'm going to look for a bucket. Like, it's My gross. stomach has moved so much. I now have abs. Okay. Like, it's <laughs> turned so much. I now have abs. Do you want to see them? Do you want to see like one and two right here? Thank well, you. you did work Thank out this morning, so like, so like, you can see your video this this morning, mayhem. So, um, speaking of abs and workouts, pretty much, I'm so looking forward to this. I'm kind of upset that it's being postponed. The Mike Tyson boxing return is being postponed, yes. as you talk about abs and everything. If you were like me and like just some, and most of everyone else on the panel, and we're very excited, but we're very upset that you know we get to miss. The exciting missed weight between Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Uh, then again, we can't wait any longer. Don't worry. The exhibition eight-round bout is rescheduled for November 28th. Quickly. Doesn't even matter. It's being postponed. We're watching it, right? Leslie, you're in anyway. You're, you're ready to see this mismatch of a fight. Straight straight out of Rocky Balboa itself, pretty much. 
Listen, it doesn't matter if it's postponed. Listen, I'm not listen, I'm not gonna lose any money on that fight. Right. I'm not putting no money in on that fight. It doesn't matter to me. Um, and we all know Tyson's got the fight. Forget Roy Jones. I mean, <laughs> listen, if I want to see Mike Tyson, I'll watch him on Shark Week. So no. <laughs> I, I no. It, right. it, it's not a big deal to me. All right, mayhem. Y'all must have forgot, okay? Roy Jones Jr. I got 10 on Mike because he shares the namesake. That man is a beast. He still looks angry. He looks like he's got it. Did you see the train out videos? Did you see it? Did you feel the power? Oh, oh my God. Rest in peace. If Ali was here and he wanted to throw one punch, I'd pay and I'd bet on Ali all the time. You better right. watch that. You better, I'll stream it for everybody. So Mike is coming. So there was an article, as you say, Muhammad Ali, real quick before we get Sammy's opinion okay. on this. There was an article that even Mike Tyson during this prime, I believe it was 20 or 21, said that even during that time, he never wanted to fight Muhammad Ali no. because he respected the man and the fighter that he was. Muhammad because, is bad. If you get beat by Muhammad, you, you beat. You beat. That's a whooping. Yeah, Mike is different. coming back. Roy Jones Jr., yo, maybe you last couple of rounds, whatever. That's cool. But Mike is a round? beast. All right. All right, Sammy. True. And then we'll go through and then we'll go through rounds. Yeah. Sammy's opinion on the fight um, and being postponed. I don't think it really matters. Like right. Eric, like that it's delayed. My my curiosity is they're not disclosing a reason why it's delayed. They're okay. just flat out saying it's delayed. Mm. So it like but there's multiple different things that they're doing um, before the, sh the fight. Like they're doing a whole documentary series on Mike retraining for it. And they're releasing yeah. episodes. Um, they're releasing episodes like every week before up to the fight. Um, but like, it makes me wonder why, why was it delayed such a significant amount? Right. And, and if you kind of look at the, is yeah. it money or is it injury? Money. 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 money when you have it when you have it on covid where most of the people can't go inside a theater or any type of building and you're postponing it just enough that you can fill up that arena to at least half capacity yeah. that you can have and literally charge the ten thousand dollar price tag to be in that ring just to see care. mike tyson people Thanks. will spend a hundred thousand oh, dollars in yeah. vegas just to see just to get yeah. front row to a Vegas fight. So when yep. you can pick up the extra cash out of those scalpers sure. and pick it up, yeah, I, I see that postponement where they're picking up the extra millions. Yeah. Burgi. Let's put it this way. Tyson versus Jones, they're two different boxes. Like two different weight classes. They're two different weight classes. Like Mike is a heavyweight. You've got Roy, which is more of a like a lightweight, middleweight set of deal. Both both were are beasts in their own industry in their own you know divisions. Mm -hmm. It's this is strictly a money thing for it to get delayed. Now you think about it this way: UFC is losing a ton of money where they can't do you know title bouts in you know, places like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's our Tuesday night show. We do that. Um, no, well, uh, they, they, yeah, they're losing money on that because they can't get the crowds. They're not filling arenas, and a lot of people aren't betting at you know casinos for that. Now you got to think until November. By that time, maybe they can get a half capacity, and maybe they could do something in house there. People are gonna. You tell them it's Tyson and Roy Jones, two of the greatest boxers in their own divisions. You're gonna put them up against each other in a sparring match. There's some guy out there that's gonna spend fifty grand for a ticket. There yeah. will be. And you will get people that will do it because they're diehard boxing, you know, pundits. They're huge fans of it. I want to see it just because Tyson's still a beast. Watching some of those videos where he's doing – he's doing those uppercut oh punches, God. dude. Like, he looks better than some 20-year-old boxes. Like, that man is – damn. Those are some fast fists. I would yes. – no. You can yes. pay me enough to get in the ring with him to take one shot. There's no – my jaw would be on the other side of my head. Like, uh oh, <laughs> not happening. So I hope Roy has a uh, you know good dental plan because I feel if Tyson catches him with one, whoo, he's gonna mess that boy up. I he really is. There's only there's only one thing that Mike Tyson's afraid of, and that was that shark that he had to touch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick, starting from Leslie back to Mike. How many rounds do you think this fight's gonna last? Real quick, Leslie, go. Three. Three. My, mayhem. Two. Three. Sammy. 
One. Uh, three. Three rounds. Burgi. I'm going at least five, and I think Ooh. it's going to be – I. this guy's – it's uh, real. It's okay. money. Okay. I'm telling you, it's money. It's going to go five, and then if it does well, Mike, you, we will get a rematch of this. But, Mike, right. how much more classic is it to take down – let's say even if Mike Tyson loses within the first two rounds. Think of oh. that. And the first round of two rounds, that's big. They can exploit that. You know what I'm saying? Five I, rounds, all right. He lasted as long as we expected him to. Roy like Jones rounds, is not Jones is not going to drop him at all. There's no way in heck he I'm doesn't just, have the I'm power. I'm just throwing it out there. Tyson, no, Tyson, Tyson is going to put him on the mat in the second round easily. I think by second round, he puts him on the mat. Hey, Roy whether, Jones, Roy Jones going to go in there and, and just lay down on the mat. and that <laughs> <laughs> He's well, going to get paid. He's going to get well, paid. While we are all getting the last of Roy Jones Jr. and the last of Mike Tyson, my opinion is this. If Mike Tyson still got it, I give it one to two rounds. And if Roy Jones is smart, like he's always been a good fighter, I will give it to Burgi and give it five rounds. But we will see a TKO somewhere down the line. Yeah. Mm. But how about something that is still around and still hasn't died yet either? Well, the last blockbuster is opening its own Airbnb. <laughs> yes. Notice how Mike La uh, Bur uh, like I, I love mayhem because I think he's enjoying this way too much. Is that the <laughs> one? That's good. Yeah, yeah, this is the one in Oregon actually. Uh, <laughs> looking to go back in time and having some blockbuster night? Well, now you can. The last blockbuster in Bent, Oregon, is doing just that. They have turned a section of the store into an Airbnb with a '90s style room with an old TV and entertainment center. Fully stocked with VHS tapes, but you, but you can't. But don't book your flight. Don't book your hotel just yet. The last blockbuster is currently taking reservations only for the county that they're in, uh, due to the pandemic. But once it's open, are you gonna have your own blockbuster night, Leslie? What do you think of this? <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I miss blockbuster. I miss uh, yeah. it. That was to me. You don't know. That was a family thing. We yeah. would talk about what we were going to go rent at Blockbuster, what popcorn, what kind of candy we're going to pull off the shelf and everything. I I miss it. I miss just the feel of it. I miss the, I don't know. I'm very nostalgic about it. So right. I would do it. I would pay to actually spend the night in that store and watch <laughs> old VHS tapes. Just, just, just to say that I did it, but I miss it. Right. So probably be a three year waiting list, but Mayhem, yeah. what about you? Would you make it a blockbuster night? Hell no. Hell no. Let huh. me tell you something. There, all right. I agree with Leslie. Blockbuster is nostalgic. It's like you think of the commercials. My son works at Blockbuster, right? You know, like think of stuff like that. Yeah, you think about be kind, rewind kind of deal. You know, like all yes. those great things. But they lost to their competitors. I can't remember the name of the other DVD. Netflix? Uh, they lost Net to Netflix. Well, Netflix, it was another store too. But then Netflix Hollywood, too. They bought Hollywood Video right before Netflix took over. They bought look Hollywood Video. So look at that. So, like for me, I, just give it up, guys. Just give it up. I mean, it's a smart play. Don't get me wrong. It's a smart play to keep them in business. Like, oh yeah, yeah you want to be nostalgic and come and sleep down and when we'll play some video. Yeah, go ahead, come sleep in. But it's only gonna last so long. Give no, it up. Well, wait, Mike, the reason why that one is still in business is because people still have a feels about that place. So it's not keeping them in business. They are right. out of business. It's just the fact that they have that one still left because people yeah. do have an attachment to it. People go, people actually go to that store in Oregon just to get another Blockbuster membership card. If you don't have your membership card and you were too young to get your membership card, you're going to that store to get your membership card. Don't get the mic yet. We still got to hear from Sammy. So, um, like, yeah. so I have been a follower of the last Blockbuster store since it became the last Blockbuster store. And it's actually the reason the last Blockbuster store is a thing is because they're in a mountain town in Oregon and they don't get um, reliable um, Internet. Mm -hmm. So they still go, people still in that town go to a store to rent DVDs and stuff like that. Um, they have a whole like Twitter, YouTube, like Twitter account. Um, and it's hilarious because they'll post, they'll post hilarious stuff. And I think it's super smart for them to do that because, you know, 
who uh, you know we're a generation of nostalgia so yeah. who doesn't who doesn't want to like walk into a blockbuster and really want that one movie and then you get to it and you have to check all of the tapes because right. they all look like they're pushed forward but they don't have the video in the back and yeah. then you have that crushing defeat that you don't get to watch that blockbuster movie that you saw right. once in the theater so you have to wait and you get put on the waiting list, waiting list. And for your yep. second your second pick and then you the second pick is out so then you go to like the rando middle aisles and you get that that video that you've gotten like 12 times already because it's right. your go-to every friday night like that, <laughs> thing. that is such a fun thing yeah um and you know it, it kind of, I think the reason that it, um, it worked out, like it, it it's a, a <laughs> such a, a thing for our generation is that it, it sort of mimicked going to the movies without going to the movies. Right. You, you went and you were like, what movie are we going to go see? Oh yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then you like figured it out and then you picked out your popcorn, <laughs> and that, you know, you picked out your rando movie snacks that are still a thousand dollars a piece right and then you talk to the crappy 16 year old band camp kid with the pimples and he's like here's your change enjoy your movie you know like that that is that bring is your fun. bring your movie back in two days and I just to avoid the late fee you're gonna get to find you know that was the best part of of, of it and I, I love being lazy and flipping through Amazon, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to watch that. And you have everything at your fingertips. So you don't even like get excited about something because it's like, oh, I want to watch this random movie. All like, right. Finding <laughs> that tape on the blockbuster was like magic. Yes. And the yes. fact that if it wasn't there, it was in a different spot because someone hit it because right. they wanted it as well, too. Exactly. Uh -huh. and, and that was the fun thing. Like, that was the fun part about going to a rental movie, you know, a rental movie place. Um, and I, I miss it because, you know, you get out of the house and Really, the only time you get to see a movie that you're excited for and you have that sort of experience is going to, you know, a movie theater. But movie theaters are stupid expensive now. Mm -hmm. Like for one person, uh, I think the ticket for by me is like over fifteen dollars. Yeah. Like just for a one person regular two D ticket. God, I gotta move out of New York. All right. <laughs> yeah. I pay, and, we pay more. Oh yeah, you guys are like forty dollars <laughs> just for a ticket. Are you kidding? We get me? eighteen to twenty dollars depending on where we where yeah. we are. Um, yeah. But but you don't you know you don't get to, <laughs> you don't get that feel of like walking in and figuring out what you want because most of the time you're like ah nope. It's on Amazon. Yeah. Here's Voodoo, Netflix, you know? Or you walk into the video store and there's that nice two or three section wall where it's the brand new yeah. movie. You walk, yes. the, you walk down the new releases section and then you end up picking like three random movies that you didn't even know existed because your first picks were out. And or, you're loving the movies that you picked. No, did. your picks were out and mom and dad's picks had a Oh, abundance oh, yeah. of it so while you want the action let's just remember okay okay flashback when mario brothers came out as bad as it was in theaters it was always you couldn't find that darn vhs tape at blockbuster so what you want to watch mom and dad wants you to watch ghost again so you yeah. have to go stuck with the ghost because <laughs> why that whole section of ghost was all over the place so you got stuck yeah birds you yeah. go ahead yeah. For for uh, man, like you see, like on the internet, everyone's got the memes that always sit there. Friday night, you know, starter pack back in the nineties mm -hmm. was Domino's Pizza, Blockbuster, like you know, Pizza, sorry, Pizza Hut, Pizza, pizza Hut. Blockbuster. Yeah. You know, you had your Mountain Dew and you had Doritos. Yeah, yeah. that that that's my childhood, man. That was my nineties. That was literally it, man. Up until like two thousand, every Thursday, Friday night, I was at Blockbuster. Or Hollywood be whatever again. Same thing. Same. Walk in there. You, it, you like you walked in. It was like the lights came on over the new section. You're like, ah, yes, I can pick something out. And you ran over to that section. You couldn't wait to grab the newest movie out. And like you said, sometimes it was out. You had to go for your second or third choice. I got lucky. I knew a kid that worked there, so he still always kind of put the movies to the right. side for me. So I got lucky. <laughs> but you know, I love that. Like you know, going in there, and getting that movie. And would I go to this? It all depends. 
I mean, how much are they charging? You know, what movies are on the on the docket? Because right. you know, I want to make sure it's got to be something good that I want to tune in and watch. Are we talking the Goonies? Uh, you know, like Ferris Back Bueller's Day Off, or his Breakfast Club, like, like that? Maybe you know, you give me an old Terminator movie. All right, you know, I'm probably going to tune in and watch that. I want that grainy feel on the TV. I want my bag of Doritos, you know, my uh -oh, Mountain Dew. Lines. Yeah. On, the, on the VCR. Yeah. yeah. You know, all of a sudden and, and, your film turning negative and it's got all the wavy lines. You have yeah. to hit the tracker to make sure like the, the screen <laughs> cleans up. As Mike makes one of it, how many of us actually in this panel actually still have a VHS? I actually have one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and but, nothing's but, exciting as a VHS. No, and, and you what? think it's funny, like Tommaso posted a thing early, said, be kind, rewind. Yes. You say that to a kid nowadays that's probably the age of 20, they no. don't have a clue as to what you're talking about. They'd be like, what do you mean rewind? They'd probably look behind themselves like, well, what am I rewinding? Like, they don't get that reference. Like, that to me is... Oh God, that's my childhood. Like hold my up, brothers, my sisters, we would definitely do that. Hold up, public public service announcement by Mr. Mayhem himself. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm off for nostalgia, but it sounds like you all went through PTSD and you all need help. Okay, <laughs> we need to close this blockbuster down so that way you can move forward with your life. No, so nothing wrong no, with remembering the past. No, Look, you no. want snacks? You want popcorn? Here you go. I got some right now. We can eat it right here. First oh, they off. don't have your movie. Right. Go to Hulu. Go look up the movie, and you can pay YouTube, <laughs> Hulu, Netflix, whoever. Hell, you can pay um, you can pay Hulu, HBO Max five dollars and get the same movie, just like a blockbuster <laughs> night. But you don't have to leave and go to the next state over. Okay, let it go. Oh. No, okay, I, well, on, not Mike, like Mike, Mike, I love you. It was oh, an Mike, experience. It was an experience. Mike, All right, Mike, man. I, Mike, I love you. Please get help. Sam, I love you. Get help. Les, 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 <laughs> please. <laughs> You know, you. you know what? You know what? You. you know what? You know what? Yes, exactly, Martha. <laughs> but he's got his, he's got his Oreo cookie now. <laughs> he he got to say. Speaking <laughs> speaking of nostalgia and everything too. This is another show slash movie that was released that when it came up a blockbuster, we had to wait an extra week or two or month pretty much to get it. We're talking about DuckTales, ladies and gentlemen. But this time, yes, if everyone remembers DuckTales the movie, this time we're going to Darkwing Duck. He's returning to DuckTales for a one-hour special. Who's ready for season three of DuckTales? Well, get ready on September 21st on Disney XD. DuckTales will be returning for uh, with six weeks of brand new episodes. Uh, but DuckTales will add a little bit something special on October 19th. They will be joined by the crime fighter himself, Darkwing Duck. This episode will be a one hour long episode called uh, Let's Get Dangerous. Who's excited for new episodes of DuckTales with Darkwing Duck and... Who is excited for Darkwing Duck returning as well, too? Leslie, you guys are all excited. Leslie, go first. <laughs> See? <laughs> all right. We all have giant grins on our faces. Right. Like, we like, all do. Darkwing Duck and DuckTales. Dark yes, and duck. I am so excited about it. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I, I, did my voice crack? Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> Especially with Crying. you being a David Tennant fan and him being Scrooge McDuck, that's another plus as well, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm for this. And let me just know, yes, I'm all for it. That's all, all I have right. to say. So you're excited for September and October. Yeah. Mayhem, yeah. you seem like you don't even care about this. No, no, no. Actually, I'm a big fan of these cartoons. Uh, oh. I was just thinking, like, Disney brought a lot of back of our childhood of great cartoons. So, do you want to make about. this a blockbuster night, too? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. <laughs> okay. So, right. but, like, DuckTales was actually one of my favorite shows because I remember Huey, Dewey, and Louie, the triplets. And, you know, I was like, oh, this must, because I don't know if you guys remember, there was a lot of cartoons with a lot of ducks. And I was like, are they all in the same universe? Like, is that how it works? Yes. So, like, that's, that, you know, like, bring Rescue Rangers in. Please, like, blow my mind. Bring Rescue Rangers. Bring everybody in. And then, you know what? I can, I can die happy. And, then, and if you want, you can bury me in a, in a blockbuster store. <laughs> 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 I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm done. <laughs> Sammy. I am stupid excited. Like, that, that, like, I would get home from school. And it would be like, boop, 
and <laughs> that went on, and then it was Batman, and then it was Darkwing Duck every day after school. And <laughs> what's funny is I didn't, it wasn't until a cut like end of last year that I realized that they even made a new DuckTales. And so I was watching the old, the like the new ones, which are awesome, and I love David Tennant. So him is mm -hmm. Scrooge McDuck. Awesome. Yes. But I was watching um, uh, Disney Plus put up uh, just updated with the original DuckTales, mm -hmm. and I play. I was watching it, and my instant ten year old turned on, and I sang the theme song word for word, like I had just heard it yesterday, like at the top of my lungs dancing with the dogs. Um, and it was just like, it's awesome. And what I like about the new DuckTales is they didn't try to remake it or make it different. They followed the original formula and that's why it's working. You know, um, a lot of times when Disney brings a cartoon back from beyond the grave, they try and rework it and make it right. new. Um, like they're like they've done with the Muppets yeah, and they yeah. use the whole formula and it sucks. So mm -hmm. I was so happy that they, you know, brought, um, you know, they, they brought, they finally brought back a cartoon, like, and did it right, you know, an original. But yeah, I'm all for the Rescue Rangers. Heck yeah. Like, that should be the next one. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm down with DuckTales. Like, I've been watching it since they rebooted it. Uh, David Tennant is Scrooge Duck. Lin-Manuel is Gizmo Duck. You know, uh, Felton Crackpot is the, the guy that basically becomes Gizmo Duck. So he's in it. And I absolutely love it. Like, I'm a huge fan. Like, I, the episode, because uh, Mayhem was sitting there saying how he wants Rescue Rangers in it. They actually had an episode in season two where all the Rescue Rangers are part of it. And it was like, it was, uh, like a, it, they were in like an arcade and it was like a spy one. And all of a sudden you see, uh, launch pad and one of the, uh, the 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 triplets was trapped and all of a sudden you see chip and dale with gadget uh, gadget and uh monterey jack and they're trying to break out and then at the end you see them fly off with like a big balloon on a basket and they fly out at the end of it and you're just i'm just like so the rescue rangers were part of this, like, this is the best. <laughs> yes, they, yes. They, they referenced gummy uh, gummy berry juice they didn't have the bears, but they referenced gummy berry juice and how to actually properly make it and they got the powers of gummy bears like, bounce all over the place at the strength. And they've actually had Darkwing Duck in it already where he plays like an actor. So now to give him his own episode, I'm hoping this could possibly spawn. Give me Darkwing Duck. Give me Chippendales. Give me, you know, uh, Chip, uh, what was it the other one? Sorry. Tailspin. Uh, Tailspin. Awesome. Like you got Tailspin there. Yeah. That's the only one I haven't seen yet them reference. Tailspin. Right would be absolutely incredible. I absolutely love that one. That's probably one of my all-time favorites. And like Sammy was saying earlier, she turned on Disney uh, Plus and you heard the music and you literally started singing right. the song word yeah. for word. You put any one of those on right now on the TV, every one of us could probably go word for word everything on. Those, <laughs> but you can't say that about the new cartoons now. Like those yeah. old cartoons, they're ingrained yeah. in our head. We know every detail of it. Everything about those. I'm down with Darkwing Duck, you know, <laughs> probably one of my favorites. Let's get yeah. dangerous. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like all you guys are excited for September and everything. Do you guys want to sing the song for everyone? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear this. Come on. <laughs> but unfortunately, one of us in the panel is saying goodbye. I believe they have prior engagements. Go ahead, That's Leslie. Right. Take it away. Uh, tell us where to find you uh, right before you bow out. Okay, you can find me at the Bit Apple TV. Uh, I am also a gamer, so I'm playing on cross platforms as Sister Slayer right now. I'm playing Dead by Daylight, uh, Call of Duty, and Destiny. Uh, I also just started playing Fall Guys, so yeah. you want to that? Yeah, I'm playing that. Uh, Mayhem, I sent you um, a friend request, so let's get on it. Yeah. You sent yeah. me a friend request? Yes, I did. Yeah. And uh, I'm also hosting a reunion of my film camp. Uh, that's TBD. I'll give you the details as soon as I can. And that's it. Oh. Also, I'm um, I'm also directing and uh, producing a film uh, called My Friend Greta, 
It's about my friend Greta Thyssen, who is a blonde bombshell actress of the 50s and the 60s. So uh, that also is DVD. But all I'm going right. to follow you all. See you all next Sunday. Enjoy your time. Bye. Thank you for joining us. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Now to get to the crooks of the matter, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We all know where this is going. Oh, yeah. You know, you know where this is going. All right. The big elephant, not even the big elephant, the creme de la creme, the chaos that has been going on for over a week right now. It is DC and Warner's layoff in their current direction that has gone everyone going stir crazy pretty much. It seems that things aren't looking uh, looking too good for Warner Brothers, which includes DC Comics. Uh, the parent company, Warner Brothers, has laid off more than three, I mean, uh, 600 employees, which includes a lot of editors and a lot of marketing people that are from DC Comics. That includes also the artists and the writers as well, too. While Jim Lee remains DC's chief creative officer, Lee also, <laughs> also has a role that, that he will be liaison between DC and Warner Brothers. Yeah, way to save your neck. Uh, Jim Lee also has come out to say that there won't be any more new comics coming out due to the pandemic. Well, there's no surprise that with everything going through DC Universe, we'll be moving, fo uh, moving over to uh, Disney, uh, to HBO Max as well too. <laughs> I gotta get Disney out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but with their new confirmation, well, uh, there's also new confirmation whether the digital comics will also be a part of it. There's no confirmation yet whether the digital comic books will be part of HBO Max um, as well, which everyone's been wondering what's going on with HBO. Uh, as of right now, DC collectors who are toy collectors uh, or will be happy to know that they will be producing uh, toys due to the McFarlane line and other companies are continuing their toys with different licensing. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's going to be happening with those toys as well, too. It seems uh, like it's, it seems like only time will tell what's going to be next with DC Comics's line, uh, which out all these books, we don't even know what stores are going to be happening, what's going on with their products or what storylines we're going to get. Uh, is this really the end of DC um, with the help of HBO Max? Will they bounce back or will they look like Marvel back from the 90s? Um, let's start with Sammy first. What do you think of this crazy layout? No comics. Um, and Warner Brothers having their hands in everything DC. Well, I think, um, honestly, it, if they do it right, it's going to be really awesome for the company and really good for them. Uh, right. The pandemic basically poured gasoline on every problem in the company and set it ablaze. And so these changes probably would have come onesie twosie, you know, down the line. But DC, let's be honest, DC's been treading, the comics has been treading water for, for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they, they do these, you know, half-assed projects like the black label comic and then they don't market it so people buy the wrong comic and then they get bad press about it and all this other stuff so you know um it's time for new blood i mean i can easily see they booted um jim as the publisher so mm -hmm. he is no longer listed as a publisher um and but he's still the coo and which or cco which is really, yeah, which is really good because um, Warner Brothers is looking at it as, you know, Jim being the liaison. Mm -hmm. So having him stay, uh, hand off his publisher day-to-day -day stuff to someone else that could probably do it better, that has been doing it for, you know, books. And I think they're bringing in a guy from eSports to be the new publisher. Um, but to bring an experienced person um, in to basically restructure the entire publishing side of things and then leaving Jim to be the creative and the liaison to Warner Brothers as a creative consultant, you know, he, they're basically setting him up to be the Feige for the Warner Brothers movie universe, which is absolutely smart because Jim knows the comics back to front. Um, you know, so I think it's, I think hopefully if they make these smart decisions, uh, or these decisions in a, in a strategic way and they pick yeah. the right people, 
we could see it potentially resurrecting not only Warner Brothers, but also DC Comics. Um, uh, and people are freaking out because they said the same thing about Disney in the late 80s, early 90s. Because that was Disney sucked in the 80s and early 90s until they hit their until they hit the mid 90s. Disney sucked and they mm -hmm. went through a restructure and everybody freaked out because, oh, no, is this the end of Disney? Because we fired this person, Eisner's out, this person and that person's out. And you got to, you know, people get lazy in their roles after a while. You know, they they sit there and they do the same thing over and over and over again in their position. And they need new ideas. They need people with hustle. And they need to get somebody as a liaison between the comics and uh, the comic uh, side and the films in order to get that side back on track. So I think while it's scary because they're doing everything all at once, um, you know, if they do it right, you know, we'll see a stronger, just like Marvel, we'll see a, a, a stronger company come out of it. Mayhem. We've said this before on Hyrule Geek Geeks, the show. And it was just about the movie department. I said they needed to fire everybody. They needed to fire the heads up. They needed to fire the postman who delivered the mail, the garbage man. Just fire everybody. Just fire and start afresh. Um, so now DC and Warner Brothers, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they're reevaluating their relationship just yet. I'm hoping that it will where DC can kind of make better movies without Warner Brothers' input, per se. But but this looks like a good step in the direction because with the exception of maybe the animation, they were putting out trash, and every now and again, they hit a, they have a hit movie. Joker, eh. Depending right. on who you talk to, some people love it, call it classic. I'm like, eh. Wonder Woman, I think, is a classic, although eh, I'm back and forth with it. I think it's better than um, Captain Marvel, unfortunately, but whatever. And then it's just like Aquaman. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> Batman versus Superman. Bleh. Uh, Justice League. Oh my God. You know, like I can go on and on. But the point is, regardless of how we feel, Martha, you know what's coming. Uh, regardless of how you feel, I think this could be a really good step in the direction. I think Sammy really hit all the points of where it can grow. So I, can't, I really can't say too much on that. But I really look forward to seeing their first move. You understand? Know if you want to do something like Kevin Feige, do it your own way. Do it the DC way. It's not like you haven't had success. It's not like you don't have some form of blueprint of where you right. can expand on. Don't just necessarily throw everything away, but we got to see what they do. God, Bergie. I'm in agreement with both of them, you know, with everything. I like the fact that they are keeping, you know, Lee on. And like Sammy said, he knows the comics front and back. Like, he knows what he's doing. So his input, he could be the next, you know, Feige, Feige, whatever his name is, to help, <laughs> you know, bridge that. But they haven't had very much success 2019 to through 2020. It's been a dumpster fire over there. So yeah. it does COVID Forget definitely. That. From 2015 and on, they haven't had a really good success. Right. But if you think about it, everything's come to light more in the last – year 18 months you know two years or so where we're seeing a lot more cracks in their you know proverbial armor where they're not producing movies they, they they a movie hits the movie theater it's like oh where's the cut where's the cut they know that they haven't produced anything good mm -hmm. like you know mayhem said wonder woman great movie i'm also kind of hit and miss with it some great action sequences middle of it i fell asleep in the movie theater like, I had to be nudged awake because it it was boring. Like, it wasn't oh good. And then, like, Aquaman, that was Fast and Furious and Underwater. You know, yes. made by the same director. Loved it. You know, stuff like that. Shazam was probably their best one that they've done besides Wonder Woman, I think, in my personal opinion. But their animation movies are absolutely phenomenal. If they yeah. can get back to bringing some of those animation movies back in, get the cartoons in. Now you could do some great cartoon series. And not just do Harley Quinn where it's off the rails, rated R, which is phenomenal. I absolutely love Harley Quinn. But they went a little off the, the train on that one. They need to bring back some of the original cartoons. Bring Young Justice back. Bring Justice League. Do something new Superman, Batman, new Flash cartoons, stuff like that. And make some new ones. Then you could get the younger crowd back in. Maybe they will want to buy some comics, not just digital. You know. And I understand the paper comics are going to go away. It's just a matter of fact it's eventually going to go that route because everything 
instant on demand. Everyone's instant satisfaction, Quibi, TikTok, YouTube. That's how people are. Tragically, they need to upgrade and update because they're getting left in the dust by Marvel. Yep. Um, and look at what they just redid with their entire uh, what publishing right, right now. Like that hurt them big time with that. I talked to my comic star, I went in there and he's like, yeah, for two months. And then all of a sudden he's like, two weeks, we have no comics because they didn't ship us anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, nothing got shipped because this whole new thing. I'm like, well, that really stinks because now I can't come in here and grab my one Batman, my one Superman comic I want, which they're pretty much going to be the only thing they're going to keep too, from what I've heard. They're going to cut a lot of 25 to 20% of their stuff. The uh, low yeah, yeah, right. All the blow stuff, they're going to do that. Well, actually, people actually forget that even in the 90s that that Marvel spent, I believe, a year, year and a half not publishing a single comic. So while every single person is freaking out, oh, no DC Comics, Marvel did this in the 90s. Where they yep. did this, this is the same move that DC is doing right now. What Marvel did in the 90s where they sold all the licensing right to all these different movie productions. This is the reason why Marvel had a huge problem with Fox, to Universal, to Sony. We're, and this is now, everything's on the Warner Brothers. Everything's on the Bugs, the Bugs Bunny brand right now. So don't forget, people, they're still under one brand. Granted, they're shipping out the licensing for toys, which isn't a big deal. But the writing, the stories, the characters are still under DC. And as far as the digital comics are concerned right now, yeah, there won't be any comics, let alone digital. DC Universe, the app, will actually close very soon, and HBO Max hasn't said if they're going to bring the comics onto their site. Will it help them? Yeah, go so, ahead, Sam. So did, okay, so DC Universe, as we know it, is closing, but they're going to basically be remaking the DC Universe mm -hmm. to be... Um, just for comics and then they're taking all of the film the animation all of the visual media that's not comics not print matter mm -hmm. um they're moving it to to hbo yeah um in terms of you know um as a creator and a, a, a as a person that you know publishes books and things like that um digital is just the much easier way to go because you can upload a file and as soon as it's uploaded people can immediately download it and there's no cost to you like right. it's super low cost point of cost. The and you know, you've got apps like Comixology, you know, yeah. like I I didn't I haven't read comics before Comixology. I didn't go to a comic book store because I was traveling 35 weeks out of the year, you know. I I I didn't go buy comics, but for five bucks a month, I can get all the comics I want, you know. Right. And I want to get and, and we had the same comics. problem. And we had the same discussion two months ago where we had one guest on the show, which basically proved the demographic goes, what's the point of having a physical copy when I can download it and watch and read it anytime I want to and go get the next chapter immediately. Well, and it's, it's, it's easily accessible because here I literally have every single comic book on my phone that Amazon has right, right. here. I can throw this in my purse. I can bring it on a plane and I literally can download the entire run of Batman up to the current point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a more efficient and smarter way. And I think I think eventually it's going to get to a point. I mean, print matter is never going to solely go away. Yeah. Because you're always going to have that 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 limited edition yeah. want and desire. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, like Jason said, love turning the pages. There right. are there is going to be a market for that, but it's going to be a much smaller market and with the way things are going things are going to be more geared toward uh, trade paperbacks and graphic novels than yeah. they are pamphlet books. You're, you're like pamphlet books are going the way of the dodo because, you know, trade paperbacks are, are outselling them by like 50, 60 plus percent nowadays. Yeah. So if you're going to get a, you know, and it's more bang for your buck. Like well, actually, this goes back to the user. This goes back to the person who picks up those comics. If right. you're the person that doesn't buy issue one to issue two to issue three, you're okay. probably one of the people that waits for it to come back on paperback, and I'm one of them as well, too. Yeah. Since I have a hard time finding my favorite variant covers, but get the paperback, my last page is all the variant covers that was ever released. Well, mm -hmm. that and comics nowadays, not, like nothing for nothing, but over the last maybe 20 years, like how many actual key issues have come out that they're worth something? Right. Not many. 
yeah. you know, if any Fair at enough. all. You know, mm-hmm. comics nowadays are you buy it, they're like diamonds. As soon as you buy it, it's worthless. You know, right. this, that's well, not the market. We don't. Right. This we isn't Marvel. Have, right. Yeah. This isn't exactly. Marvel. Where well, you're hunting right now to go get the issue that had Deadpool in it because to get the new moons had Deadpool in it. Today, right. what, are, what are we doing? We have the current comics right now getting also re released again. Look, Walking Dead books were re released immediately when the show started and they were and they were released straight on paperback, immediately mm-hmm. on paperback. And what they have not only a first printing, they have a second release and a third release as well, too. Now they're up to hardcovers. And guess well, what? Been with Umbrella Academy. Yeah. You know, as soon as they ran mm-hmm. it, as soon as it got kicked out for the first season, they mm-hmm. reprinted it. And and that's, you know, that's because comics now are a feasible way to get your project turned into a film or a TV mm-hmm. show that is now a popular avenue, right. uh, including books. As yeah. soon as you get and sign that license and they announce it, your publisher is printing a whole new run of books, mm-hmm. which makes your first edition books completely worthless yeah. because it doesn't yes. because Think they're about- running the market with right. this same Mayhem, think about this, okay? Think about this. You're a big, you're a big Gambit fan. You're a big Deadpool fan. If Marvel re-releases tomorrow, if they release, let's just say Nightcrawler number one or the first appearance of Nightcrawler in the X Men series, if they reprint that book, your original copy will now be worth half of what the original ver- uh, uh, worth is, mm-hmm. and that will ruin the value. With today's comics, once it's reprinted tomorrow, that's it. It's done. We already seen it with Image and Dark Horse have already done it already. Yep. Right. Image and Dark Horse have already changed the demographic of reprinting comics because the first edition was 10,000 copies. And out of the 10,000 copies, 2,000 are in existence because what happens with magazines, as Sam will say, they tear off the front page and they trash out the rest. Yep, That's what we're used to. Yep. Now what happens? They reprint it while everyone's screaming, oh, DC this is going digital and stuff like that. You're the consumer. If you're the consumer, you're not buying those comics. You're the you become the problem, and now we have to change it to a newer to a newer version. They're it's not going to sit there spend- with what's in demand. Yeah, and honestly, as a print, as having published, been in the print industry for twenty years, you know the print the uh, the cost of a book to be printed is going is getting more and more expensive. Right. You know to the point that it's. You know, you're going to be getting ten dollars for a 22 page book. Well, why would they spend ten dollars? You know, why would they spend you know four dollars to get it printed when they can, you know, get 30 more pages for two or three dollars more? It's a a cost, you know, profit analysis. So so my comic book costs, look at the numbers. My comic book costs what five bucks? The paperback is what 20 to 30 bucks, and it's got the whole 12. 12 to 20 uh, the, the, uh, comics in it, that the cost efficient is so much better. You make the face. But meanwhile, while, while Jason says, oh, I'm waiting for the, the DC only version, Marvel did the same exact thing back in the 90s where they did that and actually failed. He said DC only fans, which reminds me of the show when I was on with Sebastian of Talking Nerds. We were talking about superhero sex tape. Hear me on this one. Hear me. I believe Marvel and DC messed up when it came to handling digital releases and physical releases. Collector's market, unfortunately, it's unfair for you guys, as it always has been, as far as collecting rare editions. You're playing a long waiting game that nobody ever thought, well, you know what? Let's set these things in motion. Let's set these things in rules, so that way you can always get X amount of Z, X amount of monies out of it. Instead, it's good luck, you're SOL. And that's collector's market. Now, what you guys also demonstrate is that if DC or Marvel writes, we're still going to talk about DC, if they write a good story, people will buy it over and over again, especially if, especially if, if it comes in, you know, in the package that they remember or maybe something new, they'll do it for the nostalgia. We were just talking about Blockbuster not too long ago. Yeah. Sure, it's cheaper for the company to make it graphic. I think they handled it wrong. They should have been pushing out digital content as well as okay for the collectors as well because you know what when you go inside the store and you go to buy a comic book you might buy another comic book that maybe michael related to different issue. michael well they toys. did michael they, they did. didn't handle seven, it properly seven yeah, eight no years ago sammy can vouch for this as well too so will burgie seven eight years ago mm-hmm. marvel 
was actually promoting their digital versions with their comics. So with every digital that, yeah. comic book, they had a code for you to pick up the digital version. Marvel was yeah. doing this eight years ago. Eight years ago. And I saw this at New York Comic Con, uh -huh. and that was when it first started. It was at New York and San Diego Comic Con. And Michael and Sammy can vouch as well, too. DC followed, what, four years after? So Marvel was the first one to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So while everyone's saying, oh, go digital, go do this, there's always been one company that started it. There's one person that attempted it. Some of it worked very well. It became better for the up-and-coming indie artists to go digital because they were printing out or giving out their books for almost $2 or they were mm -hmm. giving it out for free during that time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you, think about it. You, you think about it now. I know, like, you know, Will and Nia is getting a little mad because we're saying that things are going digital. If yeah. you don't think if you don't think things are going digital and you don't see that, go to a comic store. How many back issues they have sitting on the shelf there? $3.99, $4.99. How many of like variant covers are sitting there that are like $5.99 to $8.99 to $9.99? Because they had to order X amount of cover uh, things to get one and then no one bought it. So how about how about go, make it better? How many times you go to Comic Con and they have the 25 cent, 50 cent books? Yep. Like, that should I tell you. I went into my local comic store and I went in there to take a look the other day. I was trying to find some Transformer comics and I could see all the new stuff literally like eight, 10 deep. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is just came out like last week or the week before. Mm. They're not going in there to buy $3.99, $4.99 comic books anymore as much as they used to be. Price point, 22 pages is a lot more, you know, you're putting more advertising inside the actual comic as well. So now you're taking away from 22 pages now, maybe like 17 pages or so. Mm -hmm. So you're adjusting it a little bit. Yes, there's still collectors out there. I still go buy some physical copies. Do I buy every single one that's on the on the shelf that day? No, I can't. I can't afford it. So I try I shrink down to exactly what I'm looking for. Fans are doing the same thing, and that's what's gonna happen. Digital is gonna go that way. And if we don't think it doesn't, look at what happened with Newberry uh, not Newberry Car Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And what was the other bookstore that was out? Uh can't Border. remember it. Borders. Borders. Borders yeah. bookstore. <laughs> they went out. Barnes and Noble because they went to what? the digital e-readers they mm -hmm. knew that was what was coming so they changed their industry to help them people yeah. still go buy books but most people can still sit at home i can right. download it right to my phone i still want it but at the same time i'm kind of lazy sometimes i don't feel like leaving the house like i'll just download it hence why we do it movies hence why yeah. blockbusters is no longer in business right it, it i tragically it's hate to say it. it's what's gonna happen yeah yeah we're forcing the inevitable while we watch Netflix change that demographic of instead of going to Blockbuster, it's like a catalog, make a list and we'll send you the next movie. Mm -hmm. Comic books have not done that. If you really want to change it, actually, to be honest, DC was the only one to do a catalog base that when you got into the comic book, you bought all the DC stuff. I went into it and got into the, to the catalog version of DC and got all the new He-Man books and Thundercats. And guess what? Once they were done cataloging it to people, then they re-released everything again as a paperback. And that became another problem. So I have a ton of, number one, He-Man versus Thundercats, and He-Man number one, He-Man and the Attorney Awards. And I have the whole collection. But guess what? There are no, you know the price of them are now? There is, there's, they're at the same price as a roll of toilet paper right now for per comic. They're not worth I much. Know. Roll of toilet paper is pretty expensive nowadays. You're in COVID, I know, it's so true. It might be worth something. You can get that. <laughs> Still. You the cheap ones for 99 cents or 59 cents? Because, you know. Well, you find No, that's not, that's that's not like, that's not, that's not I have paper. a bodega, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you right. fancy. <laughs> while while we have seen movies change from a blockbuster Hollywood video base to Netflix taking over to now every single person doing streaming, comic books have actually failed to jump on that bandwagon. And the old school collectors are going, oh, we still want physical copies. Well, they're still producing DVDs. They're still now producing the Blu-rays. So you're going to get a physical copy. Is it going to be a lot? No, it's not going to be a lot of copies. So let's just go and make a shorter version. And, of course, we'll be like every other movie where they create the metal box version. We'll get the same versions again, too. Sammy shakes her head. It's like, this is the new thing. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, it's going to be like it's going to be like vinyls. Yeah. It, that's what that, that's what that's what they're going to, you know, um, that's what they're going to lean toward. And again, it's because of of cost factors you know they they their hosting is less they're paying hundreds of a penny for the amount of space on a server 
yeah. to be able to sell it to you for say three ninety nine, which would be two or three dollars cheaper than whatever you're paying because you're not getting a physical copy. They don't have to pay the printer in China. They don't have to pay the import fees. They right. don't have to pay the taxes. So taking that extra two dollars, yeah, you're not getting the physical copy per se, like on a daily basis, but you're getting that, you know, um, you're still getting to read the book. And mm. then if you want the the physical copy, well, you're going to pay for it. And nine yeah. chances out of 10, it's going to be like, all right, here's your 22 page fancy schmancy issue of 9,000 Batman and you're paying $40 a piece for it. Right. And if you want it, you'll pay for it because that's just the way it is. If it's something that you're interested in, you'll pay for it. If you let's don't just, want it, then you'll buy the two ninety nine dollars version online. Look, let's just say this. If DC Comics right now re-release Batman Year One and Joker Who Kills as the paperback with a variant cover, I will guarantee almost every single person watching this will rebuy it because those are the number these are the two hardest comic books to still get a hands-on to get the mm -hmm. first version. And if you can get a new variant cover, those true collectors will actually go out and buy it. As Sammy said, almost like a vinyl, they're going to re-release it as something new. Yeah, like they did that with uh, The Killing Joke. Correct. They released yeah. it hardbound. Yeah. And it was, um, it, uh, I think it was like $25 hardbound. Yeah, it was a $25 hardbound. Yeah. Free edition of it. Yeah. And they like re they redid all the colors and rescanned it and all that you know all that kind of stuff. But um, you know Sebastian made a point, and I can I can potentially see comics like regular comics going this way with webtoons, where you you know webtoons has like a, an ongoing comic and uh, creators upload their own comics, and then there's a group of licensed comics. But every week it uploads like an episode. And I can I can see if DC and Marvel go to a full digital docket, I could easily see them going, okay, you get to pay for like a subscription service and you get mm -hmm. this comic every week. Yeah. Like every week, it's immediately available for you to digitally read. Yeah. And then you don't have to go to the store. You don't have to worry about the a-hole 12-year-old kid, whole, you know, bagging your comics like crap. You don't have to worry about the comics getting pulled. You don't have to worry about the owner of the comic shop being an a-hole and you have to deal with them every time you walk in. No. You know, um, will it destroy comic book stores? Well, I mean, they're kind of on the way out anyway. I go, I walked into a local comic shop and it was 90% toys. Toys, yeah. It was mm -hmm. toys and collectibles. And then like a, a wall of like, a, like a, half, a wall and a half. Mm -hmm. of new comics like 20 feet of comics and that was it and then it was tons of anime like yeah. dvds and stuff like that as someone who works in the retail industry who works for a company right now where i have to deal with that same thing you know gamestop gamestop yeah. literally where if you don't think things are changing look at your videos and your video games and movies you walk yeah. into a, a a best buy a walmart a target Forget those used that. to have the new ps5 the new PS5 has two versions, one yep. with a CD driver, one, one without. without. Right. Yep. And, and that's the purpose. Right. And you think about that now, you go into all these places, they used to have like 20 rows of Blu-rays and DVDs. Now they're down to like seven or eight. And it's just the way it's going to go. I, GameStop, I, I joke, but I'm not joking, three to five more years. And mm -hmm. I more on the three years before they're... Because yeah. if I could sit at home, digitally download it, I don't have to put clothes on, go to the store, nine o'clock release or midnight, or go the next morning, hope they have it because, well, I didn't pre-order it. I didn't get that. Look at Apple, you know, Apple TV. You yep. can download something on iTunes for a movie, 20 bucks, or I can go to the movie, you know, the video store and buy it for $20. Same thing. Why would I need to leave my house? I need two weeks earlier. Yes. Yeah. Video games, they're going to go the same route. I, I tragically, mm -hmm. and I have friends that own comic stores. And I feel tragic. I try to support them as much as I can, but I, let I, me let me give you one more scenario as well too. When Blockbuster, as we had Blockbuster here as well too, when Blockbuster was transitioning to almost get out the door with the with the with the start of Netflix and them taking over, they made a deal with Directv, and mm -hmm. with the with the help of Directv, 
two weeks after a movie was released in theaters with Blockbuster and DirecTV, you were able to watch a movie from the theaters in your own home. Guess what, guys? In about eight months into the in, into into that installment, it failed. So the fact that you could even get a people to stay home for a movie theater shows that eventually things have to change and things are going to change whether you like it or not. And it's not up to you. It's due to the companies that have to pay to get content made. If you are a comic book creator, guess what? If it costs you less to make it digital, you're going to make it digital. Absolutely. If it, You know? And great. It stinks. You want the physical copy, but eventually it's going to happen. Or you make a subscription type of base where, as Sammy said as well, too, you're paying X amount of dollars to get the content. DC Universe has it. Yeah. They can just up their game tomorrow if they choose to and now re-release the same old stuff, drop their price to maybe $5, and two weeks after the physical release, the digital version is, is there for you as well too. Think about how much money the industry will save by making stuff where you don't have to physically produce the paper the ink, the color, printing, then you have to mail it, then you have to hope it got there on time. You have all that stuff that that's cost that goes overall into the overall release of the item. Look at now where they don't have to do that. It's a digital release. It's like Sammy said, I upload it to the net. You could download it in 60 seconds later. They yep. can do the same thing. Yep. And yep. Sebastian said, look at VOD, video yep. on demand. We had Trolls, we had Scoob. We've had movies that were supposed to be set in the movie theater that are now getting released. Look at Mulan. Yeah. It's being released. I still think that price point, what they're charging $30 if you have Disney Plus is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not paying it. I'll wait till it goes on Disney Plus to watch it. But you have that stuff where that's what people are looking for because they're sitting at home right now. They're looking at reinventing themselves. Yeah. How many industries are reinventing themselves right now? A to lot. Stay re to stay you know, you know, relevant right now. It's tragic. Stay alive. But yeah, exactly. Staying alive, right? You know, in this day and age, in this industry, in this culture, staying alive is the way we got to go. And people, they these businesses are hemorrhaging money where they haven't been able to do stuff, so they have to make drastic changes. Digital, and, video on demand, stuff like that is tragically the way it's going to go. And I don't even understand people like hyperventilating over this well too. We just watched IDW do the same exact thing. We lived through Marvel doing this back in the '90s, so this isn't new, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. This has happened before. This is history repeating itself, but with this different with a different company, but with the same mo. Except yet again, we're not watching DC give New Line Cinema a Paramount Pictures or even Disney a character. Remember, the characters are still in house. We're not going to get a comic for a year or two. Is it really a big deal? And guess what? They started in the 1920s, I believe. There's a lot of content that you can download and read and catch up on. Maybe it's time you caught up, created your own storyline, and you submitted the story to DC Comics. Be the next writer. Don't sit here and complain, I need a new comic. Remember at one point, I believe a year, a year ago or two years ago, DC released three blank comic books with the cover or maybe more. I have three of them. With Batman completely bank blank with 22 pages, Superman completely bank, and Wonder Woman where you can create your own comic. How about guys, writers, artists? Why don't I'd love you to get my hands the, on one of those? I got a few of them in hand. Really? <laughs> and I'll do it, and I hope everyone does this as well too. Be a writer, collaborate with an artist, and why don't you submit the next DC story and save a business and you think of something cool to write? Don't sit there and complain, I'm not getting a new comic. Why don't you write something awesome? Well, think about, think did, what's good. up? No, go ahead, Timmy. I think the big difference between what's happening now with DC and what happened with Marvel back in the nineties, you keep referring yeah. the big difference is Marvel was bankrupt. Yeah. The only thing that got them, they, they had filed twice yeah. at that point. That was their second turn through bankruptcy and restructure. And the only thing that saved them was licensing to Fox and uh, licensing the characters, you know, Spider-Man and, and X-Men and stuff like that for future films. Um, sure. Where as DC is, that's not happening with DC. DC is not bankrupt. Mm -hmm. They're making these changes now so that they to don't go bankrupt. Yeah. And um, you know, and it's you know, it's it's a much different you know, it's a much different ball game. And I think you know, with everything, 
is speaking to the fact that everything's going digital and you know with the pandemic and everything that you guys were saying before this is just showing an industry that it can be digital we don't need people in office we don't need you know it, it's showing us where the fat is and yeah. where they've been wasting the money you know and so they're trimming the fat because they're now seeing because we've been forced into the situation even in a bad situation they see okay well all of this can be done you know via telecommunication yeah. you know why why do we have why do we have an office why do we have this why do we have that cut it yeah. out cut it out um and it sucks because it's it's the end of an era but it's also showing us what they're holding on to isn't working Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have, it's not working. It's failing at the moment and it'll yeah. just continue to be a boat anchor and drag them down. So I'd rather them shake the crap out of the industry, um, you know, and make these scary changes while they can afford to, instead of doing it out of desperation, they're now doing it in a controlled manner for lack yeah. of a better way to say it. Yeah. Pretty much look at the music industry. How many of you guys download songs? It's the same exact thing. I if you're Spotify, downloading. I don't I haven't bought an individual song in forever. Exactly. Apple, you're also Apple now you but yeah, 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 yet again, as Sam was saying, Sammy does a streaming service while Mike is doing the music service. It's the same exact concept. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, it's about that time. Sammy, where can we find you? Go ahead. Go. Okay, as always, um, uh, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock here with my uh, my fellow nerds, whoever is on the docket. Um, and then on Wednesday nights, uh, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm uh, painting and drawing and regaling people with tales of my adventures and ridiculousness um, on my own live stream through Castillo Studios. Uh, online, you can find me at castillostudios.ninja. Uh, that's my website, and then uh, Instagram is TS Castillo Studios, and then of course, just look up Castillo Studios on uh, Facebook, and there I am. I will be doing a uh, and Sebastian, you have to write the name of the show, but I will be on In the Beyond Con for uh, September. Yes, the 29th, I will be doing a 3 30 live panel. Um, women in creative industry, pop culture, -y, women in the industry. <laughs> um, I don't remember what it was titled. And then um, at five o'clock, um, I will be doing a live stream for them drawing whatever yes. I can find. Mayhem, where can we find you? When I'm not here, sitting, uh, talking about your guys' PSD, PTSD with Blockbuster? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? We're going to go on a road trip. You're coming with us to, um, to Colorado. Sure Oregon, by the way. Sure Oregon. <laughs> sure uh, that's, because, or, that's Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Oregon, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oregon. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> Kidnapping. That's what that sounds like. Anyway, yes, uh, like you have a choice. <laughs> as long as you're not driving, right? Yeah, I, I, have, I, I have a uh, blockbuster store basket that holds my that holds my uh, some of my art supplies. I stole it from the. the I still have the blockbuster blue, popcorn bowl. It's so bright yellow basket with the bright blue handles. It says blockbuster on the side. <laughs> Mayhem calls it kidnapping. We call it grass. Uh, you know, road tripping. I mean, yep. Whatever you know. <laughs> Involuntary road trips. Yep. <laughs> so. Wait. So wait. Can I make this improper? Yeah. So does that well, mean you're gonna lure me gonna to say. your van with the candy and ice cream? She's got a van. She has a van. She I has a van. A dark white van with no windows. You know yes. what? So, and I can just write free candy on the side. And you can I open the door. Who wants blockbuster and, and, videos? And, and she's gonna make shift bed. But my mayhem can continue. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Find me here, not in my home. Uh, you can find me on Geeks Unlimited. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can find me at Geeks Unlimited. I'm also going to be on Inbeyond. Uh, the NBeyond.com, uh, NBeyond show that we're hosting for the 29th and 30th. I'm going to be in the gaming panel, so I'm going to be streaming. Definitely find me at QMayhem Gaming at Twitch. Of a boom, because Mike, Mike Tyson. You can also find me on the last stop on the L, Hyrule Geekies, which are a great podcast to listen to. Let me know what you think. And, of course, you can find me at Pure Mayhem on my Instagram for anything else. Bert J, where can we find you besides GameStop? <laughs> <laughs> and on your yeah. couch. For a few more years. Yeah, and on my lovely couch. 
Uh, you catch me here every Sunday night, guys, 8 o'clock, chatting with, you know, these esteemed guests that we have, which are absolutely amazing. Everyone's got great, you know, opinions and, you know, conversations. I love it. Uh, Tuesday nights, you'll catch me and Hash doing This Week in Toy Culture. Uh, it's actually really cool. I definitely enjoy that. Um, and then you can catch me at Facebook on the Be Your Own Geek, uh, you know, Facebook group that we do. Uh, check it out. We definitely post a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of nerd culture things in there. Like we, we go overboard and then uh, you can catch me on uh, Instagram at MJBergie23. All right. Hi. Thank you all for watching. My name is Aras uh, Zandia. You can catch us here every Sunday here at, at 8 o'clock. You can also catch me every Tuesday with Michael Bergie as we talk about all themed toys with This, th this Week in Toy Culture. And you can catch me every Wednesday botching a lot of words with the awesome and amazing Sammy Castillo <laughs> as she sits there in pain all day. You can also catch, I guess, the three of us for the In Beyond Comic Con that will be happening at the end of August. You can also catch me in the beginning of September, on September 5th, for the online convention of, of Comic Related Madness. And you can also catch me physically at the at the horror at the horror sideshow market in Allentown, Pennsylvania. This is this week's show, guys. Thank you all for watching. For we will see you all. We will see all of you next week here on This Week in Pop Culture. Good